Jeff and Wilmer at Budrum, I just want to do a modification to our observation beehive. What they've done is they've got very strong. What I'm going to do is make it, make the hive a bit wider. So what I'll do is I'll take the cover off. It's been about four weeks since we cleaned the perspex of this observation hive. And I think they've done the same or even more since then. After having this observation hive, I've come to the realisation that you could start a hive off with just one frame of bees and a queen at the start of spring and, and I'd say by the end of summer you'd have a really strong hive. This is the side got the least amount, the other side's got a lot more. I'll take the other side off. This is where Wilma's going to go wow. Now my bee suit is in the, on the clothesline drying and my gloves. So I'm going to try all this without any uh, protection. So that's why I'm going to use the smoke. Have a look at that. Boy. That's in the last four weeks they've done that, all the way down to the bottom. Look at that, that's incredible. I'm sure that's more than the last one. And now take the lid off. Have a look at that, see what's down there? Beetles. They hide in all those little nooks and crannies. But they don't worry me. A lot of people lose sleep over the small hive beetle. But I'm not one of them. They never, they don't worry me one way over. All I do is squash them when I get a chance. Now have a look there. Beetle everywhere. But all I do is squash them when I, when I see them. But that's not my strategy. What I can do is take the perspex off and clean it up like I did last time and then just leave them to work that frame until I'm ready until I'm ready to put the frame in the hive in the new hive when you're working the bees you want to keep all the all your movements nice and slow you don't want to do any uh, bumping or anything like that Put this to one side. Now look at that brood. Isn't that beautiful? So I'll stick it over to one side. Even though the bees can go straight to the frame, once I turn the entrance around, you'll probably find that they'll go through the through the hole. They'll <laughs> go okay, through the hole, even though they can go straight to the to the frame. The, the creatures of habit. Oh, look at that. That's incredible. That's the uh, that's the first side. That's the side closest to the outside. That's incredible. That's that's more that's more brood than it was last time. Those sides are off and they're still going in the hole. Are they? <laughs> yeah, amazing. We haven't located the queen, but. People say that the smoke calms the bees, but what it makes them do is they, they start eating honey. That's all they do, they start eating honey. They think that there's a bushfire approaching. What I'm going to do is uh, attempt to do this without getting stung. Shake. You're a brave woman. Uh, well that's that one. Now let's do the other one. Get the other one done. Uh, well, the one's coming home and still going in the hole. Yep. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. So we can just leave them like that. They'll be alright there. Until we get the box uh, the other box ready. So we're just just tying tying these this brood. We just managed to get all the brood to fit on one frame. Had to cut a couple of little pieces out off it. So let's see what happens when we stand it up. Now this one's not going to make it. 
Take it off. No. So what we're going to do, oh. uh, we do is get it into the hive in one piece and then the bees will do the rest. I've weakened this hive out quite considerably uh, in the, the last month or so because I don't want it to swarm and annoy the neighbours. So we made a video about this hive a couple of years ago and the title is This Tiny Swarm of Bees That Just Turned Up. Uh, you can check this, that video out. You'd be amazed at how much brew I've taken out of this hive to weaken it so it won't swarm. And I've taken a fair bit of honey off it as well, just quietly. So I've just released it from the... Now that's the one. So the brood is all hatched out. And so there's... So I have no problem leaving this one out. I can just leave it out. And is that the one you set in there last time? Yeah, this oh, is the okay. one, that, the brood that we put in last time. So there's no brood in there now. So that's all hatched out. What I'm going to do is put the other one in its place. So what will happen is the bees will nurture this brood and look after it until it hatches out. And that will just help to strengthen this hive a little bit. We're lucky that there's no storms around and the weather's good and so we're getting away with doing this without getting stung. Well the bees, they settled on that frame beautifully. There's about three layers of bees on that frame. But what they're doing is they're keeping the brood warm because they're exposed to the elements. Um, they need to be able to keep that brood at a constant temperature. Here's my new box. I've made it uh, three frames wide. So what, I'm, what they'll be able to do is I'll put the, this frame in the middle and put an empty frame each side of it so that the bees can build in the empty frames and I won't have to clean the perspex every time with them. And the idea is to stick that in there upset them. So I have some empty frames that have previously been used with uh, wax on the top so they'll just build straight down with that. So you know, I'll put a couple of screws there. And the idea of the screws being I'll put a screw on each side with the idea that in transport they won't uh, wobble around and bang against the perspex. Well, that looks good, doesn't it? Yeah. So you can see what goes on in there once they sort themselves out. And I'll just set that on there for now until I make a new lid tomorrow. I've got my cover to put on this side as well. Okay, thanks for watching and we'll catch you later. Bye.